Ja. Så. My name is Mathias Falbakken. I'm here to uh, install in the four rooms, what do you call it, the clover rooms. Um, pieces from Bert Kroik's collection. Um, yeah, and I've been shuffling stuff around today and now it's more or less all in place. Yeah, Well, um, I come from an artist family. My dad is a writer and my mom is a ceramic artist. Um, my mom was always good at making me draw, so I, I was a good drawer and she followed up that. Um, I'm writing books, but that's more in, in spite of my dad's writing um, than because of it. When I pub started publishing my books, I, um, I um, decided to publish them under a pseudonym, so that's that's how complicated that was. You know, I didn't want my family name to be attached to his writing because it had very little to do with it. Um, my writing is sort of in the headlines connected to my art, but my technique of writing and my technique of making art is very di different. But there are some themes that are reoccurring. In my art, I use themes like, um, I've been very much into um, ideas around extremist thought, um, ideas around vandalism, where sort of the vandalist and the productive act sort of meets. Like in many of my pieces, like in this one, the productive or the creative gesture and the destructive gesture is one and the same. I would say that very often my artistic gestures are, are in a way negative, in a way, or seemingly destructive, but um, that's my, also my way of producing, you know, that's my way of being a productive citizen. Um, I was a happy drawer and painter until I started studying, and I was exposed for conceptual art and minimal art, and that made a, a huge impact on my work. I thought the, uh, the, um, that kind of approach was very interesting. Uh, the minimal arts uh, approach of trying to kind of reading the object of content and just being left with the object, the object as a physical presence, that's very interesting. And my sort of container works, like the jerry cans or this, harks back to that idea where, where uh, the, con uh, the content is, is taken away but um, the container itself is, is becoming, becoming the content. I don't know, if you bring stuff out like street art, you know, I despise that kind of, you know, sort of public decoration, you know. I like, I like the the way the arts, our art space sort of deals with objects. And I also uh, like a lot of the history of art. <clears throat> From, you know, of course I, I, I have related a lot to older painting, but you know, the, these kind of desperate initiatives from the beginning of the 20th century, like Dada going through up to, uh, through situationism, this kind of really, really desperate, negating irrational sort of initiatives. Um, they are hugely inspiration, inspirational for me and it's hard to imagine anywhere else where they could have been conceived in that, in that sense than in the field of art. So also the, the potential for bringing out negative sentiments is unique for, uh, for, for art I think, like my stuff. If you take it out on the street, I mean, you, you couldn't, you know, it wouldn't make much sense. But I, I like the fact that you can bring whatever in and into an art space and it would gain some kind of discursive surplus, you know. Um, I think that's positive and I think this kind of 
that that kind of awkwardness of, of the art space it what is what keeps me here that it doesn't have an obvious function it doesn't have an obvious entertainment quality it doesn't have an obvious use you know it's foggy and strange and vague and um, yeah that's what I like to be so <laughs> here I am <laughs> Yes, I have a good tip. One of my favorite paintings uh, is right up there. Uh, it's uh, the René Magritte painting, uh, situated right up there, called Reproduction Forbidden. Um, it's a painting of a man, the back of a man, and he looks him at himself in the mirror, and in the mirror, the reflection is also his back. It's a beautiful, beautiful painting. I'm gonna go and see it now myself, actually.